I'm here with Joe Craven, um, our good friend over from Bad Company Gym in London. He's been here to JMT. Leeds, cut, Leeds. <laughs> Leeds United, Leeds. We are so proud. We're shouting. Fire! The going up. And the are going up. And I meant to say England, not London. I know he comes from Leeds. Uh, let's start at the beginning, Joe. Um, how old were you when you got started in Muay Thai? So, I was four years old. Uh, it was a bit of a weird one how I got into it. Um, my mum and dad never really did it, Any, anything like that. My dad used to play rugby. My mum never really did sport, but my mum and dad's best friend, their son, used to train Thai boxing, so I think it were a okay. case. So I shifted him off. They can spend a bit more time with their friends, but I just loved it from there. So you were four, young, and that was I was in with Master A. No, at the time it were a guy called Ricky Richardson who used to work closely oh, with yeah. Master A down at College Thai Boxing. Yeah, and then uh, and then how many amateur fights? When was your first fight? So I had my first fight probably about four or five years old. Obviously, just amateur junior sort of stuff. Um, I actually lost my first five junior fights. One after the other, after the other. And it was a bit like, what's going on here? Um, but stuck with it. And then after that five, them, like, them five losses, I, I think I went on a win streak of like 40 or 50 fights, just one after the other. But I was fighting like every two weeks, every three weeks. So I was were, I were active as a junior. Yeah. I went on to achieve some good stuff as junior. Went on to win a European title. British title, all them sort of stuff, and yeah, did all right. Great, yeah, I mean, I love that, but you lost the first four or five. Yeah. And kept going, because, um, you know, so many, so many of the guys give up if they lose, lose the first two. Um, and I was telling Joe just the other day, our friend Lam Sam Krom, when he was over here, six times world champion, he was telling the guys he lost his first eight, right, and then went on to, to start winning. It's like, you know, don't, don't give up. The other thing I, I love what Joe's saying is just the frequency. You know, it's just fight, fight, fight as a, as a junior or as an amateur. Just get as much experience as you can, right? 100%. Yeah. It's one of them with, especially with fighting so frequently, especially with juniors and amateurs and stuff like that. If you want to go anywhere with it, as soon as you turn pro, no one remembers it. Right. Like, as a junior, if you were going to the adult rankings as an amateur, your record gets scrapped again. Yeah. If you go from pro, your record gets scrapped again, so just have yeah. as many fights as possible. Yeah. Obviously, when you, when you turn pro, it's a little bit different, and that's when your records really start counting a little yeah. bit. Even still, look at the likes of Liam. Liam's had 130, 140 right. fights, so I, I bet you he wouldn't even be able to tell you his record off by yeah. that. So. Yeah, I, I love that message. And I, I think it's important for people to, to, to understand that. It's just... Because what, what, we, what we keep coming up against, particularly with us putting on fights now, is um, we've got guys trying to preserve their perfect record as an amateur of like 4-0. and oh. They think they're a big deal. Kind of like Floyd Mayweather trying to preserve his perfect record. Yeah. And it's like nobody else in the world cares apart from like maybe you and your mom. You know, it's just like exactly. get out there and get more experience. Just fight. 100%, yeah, yeah. Definitely so, in Thai boxing. Yeah. Like, you've got your likes of Sanchai, stuff like that. These fighters have had hundreds and hundreds of fights. Yeah. Not one of them. No, I bet. I bet Sanjay don't even know his own record. Right. Like he's had that many fights, he wouldn't know how many losses he's had. He wouldn't know how many yeah. wins he's had. So like, just have loads of fights and yeah. just enjoy it. Yeah, just enjoy, just enjoy it and just roll from one to the next, right? 100%. So then you turned pro young, right? Were you 15? Yeah, 15. So I turned pro still under Ricky. Um, I had my first fight. Pro on Yokao, that was my first pro fight. Um, I lost in a bit of a close, iffy decision, but like, yeah, I lost my first pro, and then at that point, without trying to disrespect anyone at Call the Tide, because it was a great gym and they took me many places, but I kind of become like the number one at the gym right. at 15 years old, and I just wanted that bit of an extra push. Right. I had a great junior career at Cold and a great gym, but I just wanted to take that next step, so that's when I moved over to Bad Company Gym. 
and then from there it kind of took off. I went. A so you moved up to Leeds by yeah. yourself, or you were commuting? No. So my mum actually used to take me. So I'm from Halifax, and my mum used to take me, um, take me out off to my mum because my mum was studying a full time degree whilst working. I'm bringing up three kids because my dad used to work away. So she used to like. I don't know how she used to manage it, but used to take us to Leeds, make sure my sisters are going to their clubs and stuff like that. Looking after us and working as well, so she were up all night. But like, so she used to take me over, and then odd time I'd get train over and stuff like that. Um, and then as soon as I like passed my driving test, I got fired straight through yeah. my driving test. That's when I started driving over and stuff like that. And yeah, it went from there. So you've had, what, 33 pro fights now? 34, 35, yeah. yeah. And it'll probably be more apart from COVID, right? It was just COVID. Yeah, it would have been COVID's more, COVID's killed yeah. it in, in England. Recently. Yeah, not in injuries. Yeah. And then, um, let's see. So obviously most people probably know you for your fight against Yusuf. Yeah. That was a, that was a big one. Yeah, you yeah, took yeah, that yeah, on yeah, short definitely. notice, right? No, 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 I didn't take that on short notice. So basically, with the one with Yusuf, I had a fight already scheduled before against okay. Chris Shaw, who was like a, a very good established fighter. He fought, he fought like Jordan Watson, stuff like that. He's been on Contender, he's fought Michael Wakelin. Yeah. He's fought all the good names, very good fighter. I didn't want to pull out of that. That was a big, big fight for me. So I ended up going to Thailand. I did a, a fight camp in Thailand. I fought Chris Shaw, and then three weeks later, that's when I fought Yusuf. Okay. So luckily, I came out of Chris Shaw fight, I won. No injuries and scared. I was back in the gym on the yeah. Monday, so I fought on Saturday back in the gym on the Monday. No rest, blasted through. I didn't have a great training camp, and that's when I fought Yusuf. Okay. So. Yeah, yeah and so good. now all the injuries are pretty much healed up, right? Yeah. So I've, I've recently, funnily enough, just coming off a, a hand injury, but I've had to have surgery and stuff on, and it's cost me an absolute bomb because yeah. I, I went through NHS back in England and they did nothing for me. Right. So. I had to go private with that surgery. That cost me a bomb, but it put me out for a fair few months. It's been a bit of an underlying issue, like over the years, but like the longer and longer I've left it, yeah. the worse and worse it's got. But now everything's been spot on. I'm punching harder than ever, so. Good. Yeah, back at it. So there's, there's nothing like lined up of you, you guys are looking, right? Well, I'm fighting April 2nd. Uh, at the O2 Arena in London. Oh, of course, you just signed with Muay Thai Grand Prix. Yes, yeah, so I've just signed yeah. a six fight deal with Muay Thai Grand Prix. So Our friends, Muay Thai Grand Prix, yeah. great guys. Which are big promotions, so yeah. if you can get on one of their shows, whether it be a road to MTGP or yeah. anything like that, take it because they've, they can get your name out there. Yeah, that's why we started Road to Muay Thai Grand Prix America. You know, I've known Philip since 2000, and we we started to try and get Americans. Well, it's a huge Give show. them a way to get to MDGP. It's one of the biggest shows in the world. And then they time. got the link now with one championship, so. Exactly. That must be the ultimate aim, right? Yeah, it's that, but even, not even just that, they'll, do, they'll give you the exposure. Yeah. They're one of them companies, the massive, they've got shows in, like now, America, Australia, yeah. France, Italy, you name it, they've, they've got shows there. Yeah. So if you had to give, um, say, three pieces of advice to a, to a guy coming up, what, what would you say, three pieces of advice? First one, enjoy it. Without enjoying it, really, there's, you're probably not gonna get anywhere. You've got to make sure you're enjoying your training, yeah? So be around a stable of fighters who, are, who you bounce off, yeah? Um, Second one, what I'd say is just get as many fights as possible, yeah. Be exper get as much as experience as possible. That's the only thing you can't train for. You can't train for ring time. Sparring and fighting is two totally different things. You get your nerves, all them sort of people. It's, it's a different setting, being in a ring where there's a crowd watching. So just get as many fights as possible. And third, just keep training hard put 100% in it because at the end of the day, there's n no prisoners in that ring. Like, at the end of the day, there's only you in there. You're not, you're not on a football field where there's 10 other men playing. Like, you're, on, you're in there on your own. Your coach can be there, stuff like that, but put the work in because it takes no prisoners. That's great, yeah. So f fight as much as you can. Doesn't, it honestly doesn't matter if you lose as an amateur. 
doesn't really matter if you lose as a pro, really, as long as you're getting better and working at it. 100%. So, you know, just fight as much as you can. Um, the other thing I love that Joe said when he moved, made a move to Bag Company was kind of like he was top dog at his gym. And, and that's why we brought him over, right? Because <laughs> with Omar out injured, Austin's kind of been the top dog for a while, so we had to bring, you know, our friend Joe back. Joe came over and got him ready for Worlds a few years back. And we're going to bring Joe back again this year because, you know, nobody should ever feel like they're a top dog and not getting pushed. Yeah, 100%. Maybe it means you have to travel. Maybe, you know, maybe your coach can bring somebody in who's good to help your gym out. So, um, yeah. All right, thanks, Joe. It's not been great problem. having you at JMT. We can't have wait to have you back. Thanks for having me. All right. Peace. I'm fine. That's what all the people say to me. You're riding high in the road. Shut down your feet. And I'm the one gonna change that truth.